I'm like the cousin in the back that when we're all doing prayer, I'm like, because <laughs> I don't know it. <laughs> 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 Good freaking morning, everybody. Good to see you. Good to have you today. It's a pleasure. This is a little new. Just a tad bit different. Dare I say, this is unprecedented. Welcome to my living room. Vlogs to me are not something that I feel comfortable with. <laughs> this feels so uncomfortable. They are the videos that I've made unlisted on my YouTube channel, the ones that were made in 2015. And I know, I know I'm not the only one who has these, okay? If you're out there and you're like, me, 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 you should let us see them. Like, like, show me yours first. You show me yours and I'll show you mine, okay? That's the deal. To my Greeks out there, to my Eastern Orthodox peeps out there, happy Easter. I thought I would do something a little different. I thought I would take you through our Greek Easter tradition, what it's like being at my house. Okay, so let's like rewind 15 years. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh baby Yanni. My brother convinced me that uh, we celebrate Easter and we have a lamb because there was a flying lamb that saved Jesus or something. <laughs> I believed that for quite a long time. The Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox churches, because there's multiple, they do not necessarily celebrate Easter on the same date. I don't know what this hand movement is. The Catholic Church follows the Gregorian calendar and Eastern Orthodox churches follow the Julian calendar. So sometimes, sometimes they will intersect and we will have Easter on the same date. Sometimes they match up and that's kind of fun because then people aren't confused why we're celebrating on a different date. When the Christian church split in 1054 AD, I don't know why I remember that, there was then the West, which was in Rome at the time, and that was Catholicism and the Catholic Church, and then there was Eastern Orthodox, which was centered in Byzantium, or what is now known as Turkey. Greek Easter is so important to my family and our traditions, and it's not because of the religious aspect, in my eyes. I love Greek Easter I'm gonna stop calling it that. It's Easter. <laughs> I love Easter because it means getting family together and spending time with the people I love. That's it. When I think of Easter, I think of so much food and five million people in the kitchen and using every oven and stove top that is available and like squeezing next to each other to cook. <laughs> There's a million people and the food is just, is the centerpiece of it all. Come on over, come over to my house for Easter. We're allowed to be outside, unmasked, we're all vaccinated. Let's start preparing because Lord knows there is a lot of work to do. All right, so I just picked up the goat uh, such a long line. I don't know why I didn't expect it. It's Friday before Easter. That thing is huge! 28 pounds! But it's gonna be amazing. I'm gonna like season it, salt it tomorrow. We'll throw it on the spit Sunday morning and have a gorgeous, gorgeous Easter dinner. It's a little wild like holding that whole thing. Like those are just like legs. <laughs> I was like carrying like a body. I was literally 28 pounds of, of an animal. That's fine. <laughs> People were like, let me help you with that. <laughs> no, thank you. I can carry my own goat. So where's this butcher block? We'll see. All right, I'll be right there. I'll help you carry it. Where's it at? <laughs> All right, let's grab it. Okay, mm, hold up. If you're uncomfortable with seeing animals and like raw meat, you're not gonna like this. So if you're someone who's like, I like to eat chicken, but I don't like to see it. Or if you're PETA, <laughs> you should probably exit the video. This is a tradition that dates back so far before mass farming existed and machinery and hormones for animals. This is old school style, the way we do it. If it makes you uncomfortable, exit. And I have this, I have this problem where people are like, I want to eat my meat and I don't want to know anything about it. Like, 
No, that's, that's, I feel like that's unethical. Like you don't have to slaughter the damn pig yourself, but you can't just blindly, without consequence, eat meat. Like this exists. This is part of the process. This is an animal that I've seen in its full, in its entirety, and we have prepared it from A to Z. I know what it took for it to get onto my plate. I know where the butcher got it from. It's a really respectful way in my eyes of treating this animal. If you're interested in seeing and learning a little more about a culture that may be different from yours, like, come along. We'd love to have you. Here we are in the backyard. There's mi papa, the goat, and on the left-hand side, there is kokorezi. This is the innards and it's wrapped in the large intestine. It's like one of the best parts of Easter. Now, this goat, 24 hours prior, I rubbed it down with salt. I wanted so much time for the salt to penetrate because it's a full, it's a full piece of meat. So we took out the innards day of, rubbed it down in like oregano and garlic, and then we sewed it together. So the breast creates like this cavern where hot air stays inside and then it cooks, cooks the whole way through. My dad started the fire with his little charcoal thingy. There's my brother. And bam, bam, Prometheus came and now we have flames. When we were younger, we used to have to do this by hand. We would take shifts and mind you, this goat takes five, six hours to cook. We would take shifts to rotate this thing all day. Getting that electric motorized spinny thing, oh my god, it changed our lives. I'm making a melizano salata, a little Greek eggplant spread. Charring them, oh my god, it adds so much depth of flavor. So good, I learned that from working in restaurants. There's my mama, she's making bread. She is the best, she's so, so good. I come home and she makes this amazing sourdough discard bread. It's just incredible. Here's my Thea, my aunt. She is making a tiropita, a souffle tiropita. It's like filled with feta cheese and then it's soaked in milk and eggs. It's so creamy, so fluffy. It's fantastic. Now here is one of my contributions to Easter. I made Claire Saffitz's Meyer Lemon Tart. There's that raspberry bit at the bottom, and then I made this incredible, incredible, sour, super acidic lemon curd. It was freaking delicious. I went a little hard on the par baking. I should have baked it a little less, but hey. Now here is where the amazing stuff happens. Look at that. Here's my dad and my sister. They are doing the butchering work. She's been butchering training the last couple years, but she's been killing it. Look at her. What's your favorite part about Easter? Uh, katsiki. Can you translate katsiki for us? Goat. <laughs> the greatest of all time. The greatest of all time. Time to hug. And the best part of the night, unwinding with the cousins. <laughs> Staying up till two in the morning, just chatting. Just chatting. All in all, a wonderful time. A wonderful time. You know what really sucks? When you have this beautiful long weekend with your friends and your family and people you really love, and then <laughs> capitalism has to go and cut that all short. That sucks. I don't want to be productive, but alas, I have to be. What's something that you guys do on the weekend that you're like, I love this thing, but I can't do it as a job? Last year during the pandemic, it was funny because we had to order a half goat instead of a full goat. 
And my dad tells us, and we're like, which half are we getting? <laughs> like, is it going to be the top or the bottom? <laughs> he was like, no, you idiot. It's going to be right or left. <laughs> They're not going to just like... <laughs> <laughs> we're back in the city back in new york uh wild ride i love spending time with the family it just felt so good being with my people people were weird how you been oh good i've been great oh fantastic and uh and you and like everyone was like leaning on things and in uncomfortable positions and like smiles plastered on their faces because they were so not used to in interacting with new people. It was so funny. It was like a social experiment, looking at everyone. I mean, I was part of it, I was weird. We're all weird, whatever, who cares? It was just fun. It was fun to like have to learn how to recalibrate <laughs> into society. As we chatted, as we ate, as we had a glass of wine or two, everyone just like breathed and sat back in their chairs a little bit and like looked at the beautiful day before us. I remember looking around at the end of the night and thought, yeah, like this is it. This is, this is like what coming together looks like. It was just so beautiful. It was lovely. Y'all, <laughs> thank you for, ew, I feel like a teen, like a tween. My dears, thank you for joining me and my family. Thank you for immersing yourself in another culture and thanks for celebrating Easter with us. If you haven't already, please, hit that like button, hit subscribe, tap on that notification bell. As always, my name is Yanni and thank you for watching Flambe. Fine? Yeah. Cut it out. Cut it out. Cut it out. Oh yeah, Easter time, Easter time. We're celebrating Easter time.